106.5 FM and online. It's the After Five Guest with Wynn Thomas. And time for my After Five Guest today. That is James Jones, Welsh Rugby Union League referee. Now dual coded. How are you, all right? I'm very well, Wynn. Good to talk to you. Good to you, yep. Yeah. Um, going back, James, was it difficult to adjust to the rules of league after being a union ref? Yeah, I've been a fan of rugby league all my life uh, behind the scenes, Wynn. Um, but, you know, as it was explained to me when I first started, you know, it's a, you know, a, a simpler game. You know, you haven't got to deal with collapsed scrums and the intricacies. And uh, it was a bit refreshing in a way, you know. I felt it was a lot, uh, lot less technical and a lot simpler. Right, and you're the first dual code referee. That must be an honour. Yes, yeah, something that obviously um, you know I dreamt about. And, and when you start in a sport, you want to get to the highest point and to become uh, an international rugby league referee, especially on behalf of uh, my country Wales as well, was a fantastic honour. But then, obviously, to hear that I become the first ever dual code international referee um, was uh, was something I never dreamed of, to be honest. Now, the first international match was uh, Russia versus Ukraine. What does that like to ref? Yeah, a different, differing standard. You know, with respect to them, they're not uh, the highest ranked teams in the, in the world. So, you know, the game was a little bit, uh, little bit scruffy. But, um, you know, in all fairness, it was, it was test match level at its best. And there was certainly no level loss between those two countries either way. <laughs> no, many fronts rather than rugby, James. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, where was it played? Uh, it was played up in Serbia. Uh, it was a three-way tournament, Serbia, Russia, Ukraine. Um, so it was on, well, neutral venues for those two teams, but uh, Serbia were the ones that were the, uh, were the hosts. So it was, uh, it was a lovely week in Serbia, a country that I probably wouldn't have chosen to go to, and uh, another one to tick off the, uh, the travelling list there. Well, OK, so you had, you had a fly out there, did you? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. So I had to go through my first trip away through COVID, so all the protocols, etc., to get out there. But um, in all fairness, you know, it was a lovely place and uh, they looked after us extremely well. Fair play to the Serbians. So is rugby league big in those countries then? Um, it's it's growing. A European uh, Rugby League Federation are looking to grow the sport, so that would be uh, European B, they call it. Um, and the winners of that tournament now, Serbia, get promoted into European A, which would be the likes of Wales, Ireland, Scotland, um, and England, etc. So you know they've um, they've done well. So obviously the market in there now will uh, will will be exposed a lot greater for them. So it was a good achievement for Serbia as well to win the tournament. Right. Okay. So they. So they. What. So there will be any promotion in these leagues to go up to play the bigger sides at all. That's correct. Yes. Yeah. So there's. Uh, it's been a bit disjointed, unfortunately, due to COVID, because the World Cup should have been taken place this year. So right. There's no European A internationals as such or tournament, so that will have affected things. But in the normal circumstances, the uh, Serbia now would have been promoted up into European A, and um, had it not been affected by the World Cup, would have been competing with the big boys next year. So that's um, yet to be seen how they structure that now. When. Right. Now, Dad was a referee. So, what does he think of you being a dual man? Oh, well, he's very old school, um, the old man. So when I first told him I was going over to the rugby league, I thought he was never going to talk to me again. Because he's from, he's from the old school ilk. But uh, all jokes aside, you know, you can imagine he's very, very proud, very supportive. Um, even though he doesn't know a great deal about rugby league, when also still my biggest critic, you know, always well, wanted to tell me when I'm going wrong and finds great pleasure in that. But, uh, but no, it was a proud moment and it was... Also extremely proud of Wales, you know, nice of Wales Rugby League to allow him to present me with my um, international cap as well. That was a oh, right. big moment for the family. Yeah. Now, it was Clive Griffiths, the uh, old Lethley coach who advised you to switch to Lee, didn't he? How did that come about? He did indeed. Well, I kept in touch with Clive over the years from his days coaching. When he was coaching the Welsh setup, I was full-time, so got to know him through that. And then um, he moved up to Doncaster when he left the Welsh Rugby Union and then came across him a couple of times, obviously being a Pencloud boy. Um, we've always kept in touch, so he got wind that I'd finished with the Welsh Rugby Union and um, uh, told me to come over to Rugby League, of which the answer was I want some time out from sport. And within two days, the head of referees was phoning me, telling me how excited he was to have me on board. Board. So Clive dummy me over a little bit, but probably the best thing he ever did, in all fairness, is give me that nudge. Yeah, you were made redundant from the Welsh Rugby Union. I've never had a referee being made redundant, James. 
No, it's unfortunately it's the you know the, the highs and lows of professional sport when it all comes down to budgets. So you know it was made clear there was no performance issues. Um, we did have three very good full time at the time. Hugh Watkins was the third. He got made redundant first, unfortunately, um, and then it was down to myself and Nigel Owens. And without going into any legalities, I think it was pretty clear cut that Nigel wasn't going anywhere because he's a fantastic referee. So unfortunately, from a budget perspective, my time had come to an end. But there you were, um, a referee would sort of be some some sort of games who sit in, uh, say, uh, at the Cardiff refereeing the Blues versus the Scarlets, and then you were uh, on a rougher road then, going to Parkside and things like that. So it was a rough uh, start, wasn't it? Yeah, but it, in, in a way, when it was humbling because, you know, I've always had my feet firmly on the ground and it's like, you know, last weekend I refereed down in uh, Llandabia against Llandailo for the Welsh Rugby Union and it was my first game since refereeing in Scotland and uh, uh, in an international in rugby league. So I enjoyed it, going back to basics, rolling the sleeves up and having a bit of fun, you know. So even though it was a long journey starting again, it was, it was humbling to go back to my roots in a way. So you are still doing some union stuff as well, are you? Yes, yeah, on, on, in the off season. So, and again, you know, there's you know, my ambitions and my days of achieving things at the highest level um, have, have gone win, but I still have a fond loveliness for the sport. And it's important to put something back into a sport that's given me so much over the years. So, how do you find uh, players in rugby league then? Is, is rugby league accepting the ref's decision a bit like uh, the are in union? Is, are they easy to, to convince that you're the right, the right man in the middle? Yeah, they're very, they're a lot more talkative, uh, and referees are. You're encouraged to talk a lot more, which is difficult in the transition because in rugby union you don't speak a lot. But certainly, you know, players, there is a respect element there. Uh, but I think certainly one of the, you know, a bit like a pantomime villain. But I think being Welsh as well, when going up north and you know having a bit of fun about whether they could understand my accent, they have no clue when I first yeah. went back and forth. So it kind of broke the ice a little bit, and there was certainly no question over neutrality because Lancashire. Yorkshire, as I told everybody, I don't even know what Emmerdale Farm is, let alone Lancashire Yorkshire, so you've got the best man for the job. <laughs> you're, the, you're the total neutral, aren't you? Yeah, that's right, yeah. <laughs> what are the coaches like, James? Yeah, again, very, very competitive, very friendly, and I think, um, you know, being uh, coming from the grassroots that I did in Rugby Union and, you know, being taken under my father's wing as a young boy, they found it very refreshing that I was able to talk to them and, you know, also tell them straight if I didn't agree with something, obviously in the right circles. So, you know, they've, they've been very receptive. Don't get me wrong, there's a couple of coaches you clash with, but it's important, going back to basics, have a beer with them and have a chat, and they get to know you. So, you know, they're, they're very, very passionate. Up there. I think that's the way that I would describe them, extremely passionate about what they do. So would these guys be knocking on your door at half-time or at, or at the end of play to say, why was that decision made, why was that try disallowed? Would that be happening to you? No, in all fairness, they're fairly respectful. Some, some, you know, it's, it's discouraged. Some coaches will ask, you know, can I clarify something? And I'm very comfortable building my own skin when, and I don't have an issue with that, providing it's respectful. You know? mm -hmm. And you can tell some coaches are a little bit fired up and, you know, they've got a little bit of adrenaline going and that's the time where experience kicks in and it's a case of, not now, I think we'll, we'll save this one for the bar later. So Union's been criticised for being boring these days. How would you change the game if you had your way? I, you know, I think there's, there's, a, there's, a, there's a lot of things. I think, unfortunately for Union, you know, it's the, the, the kicking game and things like that, you know. As in rugby league, you don't see it so much because it's all about possession and the speed of the game, in my opinion, is a lot quicker because you keep the ball in hand a lot more. You know, and unfortunately for Union, I think because probably we've benefited in a way from rugby league defence coaches. Uh, we mentioned earlier, Clive Griffiths probably was one of the first. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. You know, and we can see people like Andy Farrell coming on board and things and Kevin Sinn field now coming over that's the way the game has gone it's very much rugby league defense orientated which has unfortunately caused the kicking game you know yeah and all, all these numbers of, of subs as well that must be something that slows the game down does it it does in a way and I think it's something where you know looking at a lot of the games now it's almost as if coaches have preconceived uh, we're going to change so and so on for, on 50 minutes 60 minutes it's almost like a game plan whereas comparing it to rugby league and, and certainly what they're doing now at the lower level as well in rugby union is you're 10 interchanges you roll them on roll them off as you see fit and it keeps the game going so I think that is a good element now you don't have to worry about you know who's that person are they coming off can they come 
come back on, providing they don't go off with an injury, in which case they can't come back on mm. for safety purposes. I think that's a, that's a big, big advantage now, certainly in the community game. And, you know, if that comes in the top level of uh, rugby union, it may help again to do away with those complexities. But you mentioned the scrub here, on James. It's different in league, isn't it, than it is in union. League is what, just a technical start, restart of the game, is it really? In, in 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 league, yes, is a case of bringing the forwards together, and it's, it's literally a means of you know the old term head and feet. So it doesn't matter. You put the ball into the scrum into the second row's feet, and it's in and away. And very rarely do you see them pushing. And I've said you know said for years now, you know, if rugby league scrums were like rugby union, I'd still be refereeing internationals because it's very very easy. They don't want to collapse and scrum and as they do in union. In union, when it's it's a weapon, the scrum is not just a means of restarting the game. You know, you've got big, massive forwards that want to drive players away mm. from that uh, element of the ball, and it is seen as an attacking force in uh, in union. So, have you sort of used TMO in these games that you've refed, uh, James? No, I, I've been involved in games of TMO. I haven't refereed one yet, um, but certainly the use of the uh, video referees, we call them in rugby league, um, it's a lot more wide ranging, you know. And again, that I think rugby union have taken that element from rugby league, and it's getting better because the protocols are widening. So you know, the TMO will have an input now on foul play. They'll have an input live as well. You could check things on the run, and I think you know the assistance is there, which is nice in a way when because you don't have to stop the game either. They can do it whilst you're on the run, and even though sometimes the public see things that perhaps can take too long to make a decision, at least we're getting the right outcomes now. Um, the majority of the time, there's still element of human error, but that's uh, that's the way sport goes. Right, and what what where does, where does Welsh Rugby League take you next, then, James? Well, hopefully now the the big goal now win is uh, is the World Cup. You know that's that's next year. So I'm I'm right. on the international panel. I've now become, as you said, an international referee. So that's the ultimate goal now is to represent Wales Rugby League at the at the World Cup and you know be the be the first referee to do it. So you know you don't count your chickens. You've got a lot of hard work and a lot of water under the bridge. So if I go as a touch judge, if I go at any capacity whatsoever, I think that's the pinnacle of any referee's career really is to get to a World Cup. So we shall see. All right. Well, well done and good luck for the future. Thanks so much for being my after five guest today. Yeah, come on, Thank you. Take care. Thanks so much indeed. Thank you.